how this is part three of Justice Secret's judgment. From para 56 onward, the court, the learned judge embarks on a judge uh, on an exercise. Now Justice Sikri proceeds on finding out the meaning of amendment of this constitution. And he goes to the well tried and tested concepts of reading the word okay, in their context. He relies on the case of he says I must look at the whole scheme of the constitution. It's not right to construe words in vacuum and then insert the meaning into an article. He relies on Bidde versus General Accident, Fire and Life Assurance Corporation. He says, the first thing one has to do, I venture to think in construing words in a section of an act of parliament is not to take those words in vacuum. So as to speak and attribute to them what is sometimes called their natural or ordinary meaning. Few words in English language have a natural or ordinary meaning in the sense that they must be so read that their meaning is entirely independent of their context. So there are very few words in English language which are independent of their context. Otherwise, you'll have to look at the context in your previous work. The method of construing statutes that I prefer is not to take the particular words and attribute to them a sort of prima facie meaning, which you may have to displace or modify. It is to read the statute as a whole and ask oneself the question, in this state, in this context, relating to the subject matter, what is the true meaning of that word? So the doctrine is not to take words in vacuum, but to read them with the context and ask yourself a question that in this subject matter, okay, relating to this subject matter, in this state, in this context, okay, what will be the true meaning? Then he agrees with the state reasoning propounded by Lord Green, okay? Lord Green says in Bone versus Crematorium, English words derive color from those which surround them. Sentences are not mere collection of words to be taken out of the sentence, defined separately by reference to additionary or decided cases, and then put back again into the sentence with the meaning which you have assigned to them as separate words. So as to give the sentence phrase a meaning which as a sentence or phrase it cannot be a without distortion of English language. Just as Holmes in town versus Eisner say, a word is not a crystal, transparent and unchanged. It is a skin of a living thought and may vary greatly in color and content according to its contents and the time in which it is used. You know what the appropriate way in which Justice Holmes is explained. He said, a word is not a crystal or a transparent and unchanged thing. It is but a skin of a living thought. So what we think is expressed through words. And since it's a skin of a thought, skin of a living thought, it may vary greatly in color, content, according to the circumstances of the time when it was used. What Holmes said in particular is particularly true of amendment or amendment. I may also refer to the observations of Goyner C.J. and Lord Wright. A grant of power in general terms Standing by itself will no doubt be construed in a wider sense, but it may be qualified by other words, other express provisions in the same enactment by the implications. Now, what the learned judge is doing is that he's saying that look, power can be granted by one particular section or an article, but there could be other articles, other sections which actually could, by implication, control that power. Okay, the question then is one of construction. In the ultimate resort, must be determined upon the actual words used right in vacuum, but as occurring in a single complex instrument in which one part may throw light to another. The construction has been described as the federal compact, and the construction must hold the balance between all aspects. In the Constitution, the word amendment or amend has been used in various places. To mean different things. In some articles, the word amendment in the context has a wide meaning, and in other contexts, it has a narrow meaning. And he goes on giving an illustration in 107 and 108 
how the construction would be narrow. Okay. Then again, he goes to Article 4. Okay. Uh, here he again says that the concept, uh, the word amendment has a narrow meaning. Law under Article 3 and 4 must confer to the democratic pattern envisaged by the Constitution. And the power which the parliament may exercise will not the power to override the constitutional scheme. For example, no state can therefore be formed, admitted, or set up by law under Article 4 by the parliament, which has no effective legislative, executive, or judicial orders. Now, just as Shai Mangal Senior Union of India has said that you cannot constitute a state without giving the state its legislature, its executive, or its judicial orders. Then we come to Article 169, sub clause 2. Okay. Um, then amendment to the schedule, fifth schedule. Okay. Parliament may from time to time repeal or amend addition, variation, or repeal. So the, the judge would be taking this, these words. Okay. And try to find out whether they are in narrower sense or whether they are used in larger, wider sense. Okay. As far as uh, fifth schedule D are concerned, okay, schedule five and schedule six areas. Okay, these are areas which are provided like schedule five is except entire country except Tripura, Assam, Meghalaya, and Mizoram. Okay, schedule six applies to Tripura, Assam, Meghalaya, and Mizoram. Five to the India, six only to these countries. Okay, let's proceed further. We were there. Here the word amend has been expanded by using the expression by way of addition, variation, and repeal. So all forms of amendment. Now one will have to bear in mind that an amendment would always include substitution, substitution, repeal, variation, addition, it all comes over there. So he says that although these three words have been used, but even here it seems to me the amendments will have to be in the line with the full constitution. So it's not like you are in a rampant and you can go ahead and change anything. Okay. Like you cannot constitute a state without giving it a legislature, executive, and judicial. I may mention that in the case of amendment, which may have been made, uh, no, let's not go into these all nativities of these particular sections. Then he goes to the 1935 Government of India Act, there the Governor General was given the power, a very wide power, and he says that here yeah, the word amendment has been expanded. It may be that there really is no expansion because every amendment may involve an addition, variation, or repeat of the part of a provision. And then those two various bills which state govern like under Article 200, governor is able to suggest. Okay, he says in Article 35B, the words used are any law enforced immediately before the commencement of this constitution, subject to the terms thereof, to any adaptations and modifications that may be made therein under Article 370. Continue enforce until altered repeal or amendment of the power. Here all the three words are used. Giving a comprehensive meaning, reliance is not placed on the, by the draftsman only on the word amend. Similar language is used in the Article 370, whereby existing laws continues to be enforced until Article 350 amend by the concrete place of show or other concrete authority. Then it goes to 243 to okay, inferring power and precedent to make regulations for Part D fifth schedule. Okay. Then Article 252, two words are joined together to give the wider power. Okay, 254 deals with the inconsistencies between laws made by parliament and laws made by legislature of the state. Okay. In Article 320, okay, again the way repeal and amendment come together. I have referred to variations in the language of various articles dealing with the questions of amendment or repeal in detail, because our constitution was drafted very carefully. I must presume that every word was chosen carefully and should have its proper meaning. I may rely for this principle 
and the following observation. Okay, Holmes versus Jennison. Okay. In expounding the Constitution of the United States, every word must have its due force and a proper meaning. For it is evident from the whole instrument that no word was unnecessarily used or needlessly added. A reference was made to 6 2 of Indian independence. Okay, here again, the repeal and amend these two words were found. Here, the comprehensive expression repeal or amend gives power to the to have a completely new act different from an existing act of parliament. So there is no doubt from a perusal of these provisions that different words have been used to make different demands. In view of the great variations of the phrase used all through the constitution, it follows that the word amendment must derive its color from Article 368 and the rest of the provisions of constitution. There is no doubt that it is not intended that the whole constitution could be repeated. This much is conceded by the United Councils for the Respondent. So, one, one great thing that comes out of Keshanan Bhati is that it was fairly considered by everybody that 368 cannot be used to repeal the whole constitution. Okay, you cannot negate the entire concept of constitution by resorting to Article 368. That much was conceded. And this is a very vital issue because, you know, good councils always concede to positions which are fair, judicious, okay, and which perpetuate the perpetual justice, to put it simply. Therefore, in order to appreciate real content of the expression amendment of this concept, all things will stop over here. 